Mesa is one of those Warframes that has always been meta. Specifically, her Peacemakers just overpowers all enemies due to the sheer volume of damage that you can throw out at once. She also has great ways of surviving. Her only one issue seems to be energy, and that's easy to solve. So let's talk about her abilities and then go over four builds, two high level builds, one mid range, and one beginner friendly build. Friends, I hope you are doing well, and if you like this video and you want to see more, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much. For her passive, it's a bit weird in terms of she gains specific benefits when wielding certain weapons. If she wields dual wielded secondaries, she gains 15% fire rate. With one handed secondaries like pistols, she gains 25% reload speed. And if she does not have a melee weapon equipped, she gains 50 health. The plus 50 health is a bit useless, the 15% fire rate is a nice boost, and the 25% reload speed can be worth it if you use incarnons because the reload speed affects the transformation of your incarnates. This passive is nothing crazy, just reasonably solid since it's very usable. For her first ability, Ballistic Battery, Mesa stores 70% of her primary and secondary weapons damage, then when it's activated again, her next shot will use the store damage as well as its own damage. Important note here is that this store damage does not work on multi-shot. It only works on one of the projectiles. The amount stored is capped and it can be increased along with the conversion percentage by modding strength. Even though this does not work with melees, you can increase this damage by using gun blades if you like, but gun blades cannot use the store damage once reactivated. This ability is a bit lackluster on most weapons, but some of them really use it well, like the Cedo, the Latron, and generally any big AoE. This ability becomes even stronger with its augment Ballistic Bullseye, which will increase the crit chance of the shot by a flat 50% at base, and you can also increase it by modding strength. You can really create some big explosions with this. Her second ability is Shooting Gallery, which creates an energy ring around Mesa that increases her weapon damage and jams enemies' weapons. The damage that you gain can be increased by modding strength, and the duration of the buff by modding duration, and the range in which you jam jam guns is moddable by range as well. The weapon damage that you get from this is additive to base damage mods. This damage increase does affect melee as well as Mesa's Peacemakers. The last thing about this buff is that when you play in a group, two instances of this buff will appear. One of them jumps from player to player and Mesa gets one for the entire duration. The duration that the buff will stay on you is your duration on it divided by how many players are currently playing with you. So if you are playing with three additional players and and let's just for simplicity sake the duration is 30 seconds the buff will remain on each one of your allies for 10 seconds this is a really solid ability for Mesa and a really bad inconsistent ability for allies. The augment for this ability is called Muzzle Flash and it flash bangs enemies after you get 6 kills. This is a great CC and opens up enemies for finishers and just disables them for a long time based on duration. The range of this as well can be modded by duration. This ability is also her helminth and a great survivability tool if you need something like this. Her third ability is Shatter Shield and reduces incoming damage by a 80% at base and can be modded by strength all the way up to 95% damage reduction. And it also ricochets hitscan bullets back to the attacker and non-hitscan bullets randomly somewhere else. They don't normally seem to hit a target, but it still reflects it away from you. The augment for this ability is called Stagger Shield and gives reflected bullets a 50% chance at base to stagger enemies on hit. This can be increased by modding strength for better chances, but in my opinion it's not super great, but it can be handy for even more survivability. I just don't use it a lot. And, and because in my opinion, Muzzle Flash just works better. Mesa's fourth ability is Peacemaker and activates her exalted weapons called the Regulators. This is what Mesa is primarily known for. And like all exalted weapons, they can be modded. Once activated, Mesa will pull out the Regulators and a ring will appear on your screen. Holding fire will fire randomly at enemies inside the ring. Each shot you fire will narrow the ring up to a cap and you can increase it with more range, but it's not worth it's very diminishing returns and you won't notice a huge 
change. As the ring gets smaller though, the fire rate and damage of the peacemakers are increased. The damage up to 150% and the fire rate up to 100% starting at 25%. You also can't move during this ability unless you have the augment. Speaking of, Mesa's augment is called Mesa's Waltz and allows Mesa to walk very slowly while channeling peacemaker. 50% walk speed specifically. This is one of those augments I don't really like using because you are giving up some power to have the ability to walk and roll. I mean you can add some parkour velocity and dodge speed and stuff to make it quicker so sure it's very much up to you. I'm personally just not a fan though. So I mean it almost goes without saying that if you mod her regulators even semi properly they are devastatingly strong. One of the strongest abilities in the game without any question. And that's it for the abilities. Now a few notes. Mesa has basically two types of builds primarily. One focusing on regulators, this will be 99% of people, and the other focusing on ballistic bullseye. So the two high level builds will focus on these two and I will give the build and variations on either helmet abilities or mods. Because Mesa truly has a bunch of builds and options that you could go. Now I'm not gonna go the infamous red crud build trying to just see how gimmicky we can make Mesa but but um, I'm gonna just do consistent builds. They are strong, they can kill steel path, no issues, and they will consistently actually hit orange crits with occasional red crits. But going full red crits is cool and all, but it becomes a bit redundant unless you are planning to kill level cap demos with it. Or any kind of like level cap content to be honest. So let me know if you guys want me to do a red crit build in the future, then I will do it. But for now, really pointless if you're only looking at steel path. So for the first build, here it is. And to illustrate a point, I'm not adding a damage increase helmet on here. Because in all honesty, it's just not needed whatsoever. Regulators are just that strong. This build has dispensary helmets onto it for infinite energy via equilibrium that also converts health orbs obviously. So you can freely use blind rage to dump efficiency. A change that you can make if you want more damage is instead of dispensary put on nourish and swap equilibrium for energy nexus. But a nice thing is that dispensary will also heal all damage you take via combat discipline so it sustains you there as well. We have combat discipline on here of course to get the flat crit from arcane avenger and flat means it gets put on after all the crit chance calculations. For example, if you end up with 100% crit, this will give you 145% crit after you proc it. This build gives you a 4.5 times damage multiplier on regulators and a 76% additive base damage from shooting gallery. You can boost regulators to 5 times damage by replacing umbral intensify with precision intensify, which gives a 90% increase to regulators making it 5 5.25 times instead of the 4.5 times and takes the additive damage from shooting gallery to 65% which yes is the better option overall but since I don't just run this one build I do need the umbral intensify for another build and then for the second arcane it's arcane velocity for more fire rate to your regulators now there is something here that I do sometimes depending on how I feel and that is replacing arcane velocity with arcane eruption because of dispensary it gives you a ton of cc and I just like it but it's less optimal. So yes, you can feel free to replace dispensary with raw or nourish, but again, nothing in steel path can stand up to this as it is. On the other hand, if you want shield gating and muzzle flash on here, I'd suggest this build. This takes away narrow minded intensify and power drift and replaces it with muzzle flash and range for a nice stun effect. Then with no combat discipline on, you can replace the arcane avenger with molt augmented to still get the 300% strength. And lastly, you can replace adaptation with rolling guard on any of these builds as that's kind of what I normally run. Now let's jump into the regulators build. For the regulators I run secondary outburst on my secondary dual weapons. Dual weapons because you get the extra fire rate. Secondary outburst consumes your combo to give you more crit chance and more crit damage and probably the easiest and most consistent abuser of this arcane is ceramic dagger. Yes I know you can use the furax wraith of course with for the increased fire rate but I feel again 
mean it's not necessary at all so do it if you want to but i'm sticking with the dagger so important for the ceramic dagger is the first perk being gun and blade for the initial combo then modding corrupt charge and covert lethality on it for more initial combo if you have an initial combo riven then of course add it here as well so now when we get 100 kills which happens very quickly you will permanently not counting rivens of course have 180 percent extra crit chance and crit damage when swapping to secondaries so just tap the swap button twice when exiting peacemaker and get the benefit for 30 seconds this is refreshable at any time for the regulators themselves crit chance and crit damage from creeping bullseye and target cracker then heat and corrosive for some armor stripping and i know you might be wondering why galvanized shot trust me these things fire so fast you will absolutely proc status and at only two stacks of this it outperforms hornet strike hornet strike giving you 220 percent base damage and at two statuses only galvanized shot gives you 240 percent base damage and if you are doing higher level content using this with the Cedo epitaph or kuva new core to proc statuses is absolutely the way to go so if you are only ever sticking to base steel path and don't like this please replace it with hornet strike no worries other than that just heat and corrosive for armor stripping if the enemy is for some reason tough to go down this scales comfortably so no worries we will go over a more budget version of the regulators when we get to the mid range and new builds but for now this is what i use and as you can see this works very well as a side note this is also why i consider the cedo mesa's best in slot primary because exiting regulators moving to a new area and then doing a secondary fire to prime a group of enemies then jumping into peacemaker and wiping them all is just hard to beat another change here if you don't have arcane velocity for your warframe i'd also recommend replacing heated charge with anemic agility for fire rate lastly part of this is the companion with the bite and tenacious bond combo for extra crit damage and for me specifically the panzer for some viral to make enemies melt if you don't use the panzer a primer could easily replace this or replace corrosive with viral if you like on the weapon heat and viral still one of the best ways to go if you use sentinels then it's even easier to get the crit damage buff because of their weapons being able to have weapon crit mods and that's it super solid regulators build and it will make you not struggle with anything in the steel path or wherever you are so for the second build the cedo works really well <laughs> again i'm just singing the cedo's praises with mesa because it is so good and it's also because if you fire the empowered glaive you can quickly activate this ability again to make your empowered glaive build up the stacks again making you permanently hit huge numbers another weapon that works a lot similarly is the latron since the projectile stays alive a lot longer than many other weapons so this is just high strength and huge numbers if you are worried about energy then that's where nourish comes in if you are not worried about energy because you're running something like the tome or xenarik you can replace this with raw we will have to see how severe the nourish nerfs are before we write it off completely but this should be more than enough to upkeep this build very easily other than that if you are running nourish or tome and don't like the efficiency being this low replace blind rage with auger secrets or even streamline if you still plan on using regulators as well this is just a simple fun build that i use with the cedo mostly and it's quite comfortable to use when you get used to it here's how i upkeep the 100 percent charge with the cedo permanently This is a really strong build and has become my preferred way to play Mesa to be honest. Now for the mid-range build, this is very simple. Full umbral set and I've purposefully put them on the wrong polarities to show you that it still works. This gives you the full damage reduction from shatter shield and still gives your regulators a 2.6 multiplier. So it's still solid and speaking of, here is a nice mid-range build for the regulators. Mid-range still meaning you can do steel path like it's nothing. A last note is that if you have the capacity, adding streamline to Mesa will do wonders for the energy economy it also should be obvious that with all the builds i highly recommend the cedo sorry i bring up the cedo a lot but it's not only for easy priming between peacemakers but also heavy damage for ballistic battery it's like the perfect weapon for mesa let's be honest here now for the new player build mesa does struggle a bit with survivability in the steel path with something like this so 
Luckily, Shatter Shield is at 95% damage reduction just with Intensify, but my recommendation would be that if you reach the Steel Path and you do not have Rolling Guard or Adaptation, just go spam some Arbitrations to get that as soon as you can. Also get some Endo and, you know, upgrade your Umbral mods. Otherwise, this can technically still do it, but it's still quite squishy. Another helpful tip is that you get the Vazarin Focus School, because something like Guardian Break and Guardian Shell is really great but like every Warframe if you can get Protective Sling you can ignore damage altogether. Let me demonstrate with Protective Sling you can get out into Operator and Sling through your Warframe and then when you transfer back into your Warframe you will be immortal for 5 seconds and you will heal health back. This is invaluable for surviving heavy hitting enemies. That's why it's the go to school for endurance runs. It also gives you status immunity and if you get good at this you will be able to do this quick with no real upset to damage output. Here is a newer player regulators build as well to work towards. And if you're talking about anything not steel path this build is really overpowered but start struggling at steel path without vazarin or adaptation and rolling guard and that's it that's all the builds i really as i said for the new player build i really do suggest that if you reach the steel path and you still don't have a lot of mods i mean get to farming that is that is kind of like the only way that you're gonna super improve um, your survivability your damage and everything but uh for non-steel path that build works fine so that's it i hope i explained mesa well and uh, hope you enjoy the builds and for now that's about it stay safe out there and see you in the next one thank you so much for watching much love humans what have you learned